This is Mr. Martin. This, these are the uh, video notes for uh, math analysis, uh, pre-calculus honors for section 4.4. .4. We're going to be talking about trig functions of any angle. Uh, and um, really, a, a lot of what we talk about in this section is just building on uh, what we've done in the previous sections with the unit circle. So now, instead of having a circle with a radius of 1, we're going to change to circles that have any radius. So let's just uh, review for a second here. When we had our unit circle, and I had some point here, x, y, and we were on the unit circle, so this point here was 1, 0, which means our radius over here was 1. The sine of our angle here, theta, simply turned out to be y over 1 or just y and the cosine of the angle just turned out to be x over 1 which is just x so it really simplified down to the x and y coordinates for the sine and the cosine but now when we change it so we don't have a radius of 1 uh, we're just going back to Sokotoa okay so the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse which is y over r just using different notation um, cosine would be x over r adjacent over hypotenuse and the tangent would be the sine over the cosine or the opposite over the adjacent and then we've got our reciprocal functions so I think it, you know one of the keys here is just making sure that you um, sketch your triangle in the appropriate place and um, work it out using Sokotoa Alright, so uh, let's move on to reference angles. <clears throat> so we have a definition here. We're going to let theta be an angle in standard position. Remember, standard position, it has its initial side on the positive x-axis. It's reference angle. So we've got three things that are really important here for reference angle. It's the acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the horizontal axis. So it has to fulfill these three requirements. So when we talk about the horizontal axis, we're talking about the positive or the negative x axis. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, three angles we're going to start looking at an angle in the second quadrant. We'll go back to the one in the first quadrant. So here's my angle theta. And my reference angle has to be the acute angle theta prime formed by the terminal side of the angle. So that's this side of the angle. And the horizontal axis. And it also has to be positive. Uh, so let's put this in here must be positive okay so the only place that we can put an angle in here so it's formed by the terminal side the horizontal axis it's acute and positive is if I put it in this way so this angle is positive because it goes counterclockwise it's acute. It's formed by the terminal side and the horizontal axis. We'll call that theta prime. So if we were going to calculate this angle theta prime, theta prime is going to be equal to, notice that these two angles add up to 180 or pi. So if we wanted to figure out what was left from that 180, we would just subtract theta. So pi minus theta. Or if we're working in degrees, it would be 180 minus theta. All right, so this is in quadrant two. Now if we have an angle in quadrant three, so here's my angle theta. Again, we need an acute angle formed by the terminal side, the horizontal axis, and it has to be positive. So the only place it could fit in would be here. So here's my theta prime. We can see it's more than 180. So if I subtract out the 180 or that pi, I can figure out what the theta prime is. So theta prime in this case, in the third quadrant, 
is going to be actually I'm sorry it's uh yeah it's just subtract 180 so we're actually we're going to subtract 180 from theta so theta minus 180 or if we're working in radians it would be theta minus pi all right so that's in the third quadrant all right moving on to the fourth quadrant then we'll go back to the first so here's my angle in the fourth quadrant here's theta so now again we need an angle that's formed by the terminal side horizontal x-axis it's got to be acute and positive so the only way we could fit that in so it fulfills all those requirements is right in here in this case we see that these two angles theta and theta prime add up to 360 or 2 pi so if we were going to calculate theta it would be 360 minus theta or if we're working in radians 2 pi minus theta and this is in the fourth quadrant so the reason that we skipped right over to the second quadrant is because we'll put a little note here an angle in quadrant one is its own reference angle okay so it's its own reference angle alright so let's take a look at a, a quick example of a reference angle here so for our example I want to find the reference angle for theta equals negative 5 pi over 6. So we didn't really talk about what to do if the angle is negative, but if you look at it graphically, I think you'll um, see it's not too hard to figure out. All right, and then we are going to graph theta and theta prime as well. All right, so let's start out with a little sketch here negative 5 pi over 6 so that's almost negative 6 pi over 6 negative 6 pi over 6 would go all the way to the x-axis this way so negative 5 pi over 6 is going to go just before it about 30 degrees before 180 so here's my theta now the only way I can fit in a reference angle so it's positive acute is formed by the horizontal axis and the terminal side is if I put it right in here. Okay, so remember counterclockwise is positive. All right, so here's my theta prime. Now, if I look at these two angles, think about them in terms of absolute value. I can see that the absolute value of these two angles is going to equal 180. So if I want to calculate theta prime, all I have to do is take the absolute value of theta and subtract it from pi. All right, so um, that's going to be 6 pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 6. So my reference angle turns out to be pi over 6. So as always with the videos, if you have questions, pause, write down your question, and make sure you ask me the next time you see me in class. That's very important uh, for the flip learning. All right, moving on to some other examples. Um, we're going to be given two constraints, and we need to determine which quadrant the angle lies in. So for part A, we know that the sine of theta is less than 0. So what this tells us is that y is negative. OK, and here we have the secant is greater than 0. So secant is a reciprocal of the cosine, and cosine um, uses the x. So that means that the x is positive. So I usually just like to make a little uh, coordinate grid, coordinate axes. And 
I'll put the two places where y is negative. So y, if I go up, y is positive. If I go down, y is negative. So I know y is negative in the third and the fourth quadrant. And I know x is positive to the right. So that's in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. And I see when these two things happen at the same time. So if the sine of the angle is negative and the secant of the angle is positive, that means that we have to be in quadrant 4. All right? If you want to pause the video and go ahead and try uh, parts B and C, go ahead. Otherwise, I'm going to work those out. So tangent is greater than 0. So since tangent is based on the x and the y, it's going to be positive when the sine positive or negative, the signs of x and y are the same. So x and y are both positive in the first quadrant, and they're both positive in the second quadrant, because here it's positive, positive. When you divide it, it's positive. Here it's negative, negative. When you divide it, it's also positive. And here the cosine is greater than 0. So that's going to be in the when the x is positive, that's in the first or the fourth. So we can see that these two things occur at the same time in the first quadrant. Moving on to the next example. I've got the cotangent is negative. The cotangent is going to be negative when the x and y are opposite signs. So that's going to be in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant because here the x is negative when the y is positive. And here the y is uh, the x is positive when the x is negative. And then the cosecant is negative. Cosecant is based on the sine, and sine is, uh, comes from the y-coordinate. And the y-coordinate is negative here and here. So those two things happen at the same time in quadrant 4. All right. so uh, number 2, we want to find the remaining uh, trig functions, and we're given that the cosine is negative, so that's going to be either in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3, and we're given that the sine is positive, so that's going to be either in 1 or 3, so I know we have to be in the second quadrant. So I've got a triangle in the second quadrant, cosine is x over r, so I know this is going to be negative 5, this is going to be 13, and we can use Pythagorean theorem or um, Pythagorean triples to figure out that this side here is 12. This is really my angle, and then this would be my reference angle over here. Um, so I'm going to end the video here. Go ahead and find uh, the remaining five trig functions. We already have the cosine. Go ahead and find the other five, and um, we'll check those over the next time I see you in class. And uh, as always, make sure you write down those questions. We'll see you next time.